Hi everyone, Leah here from EurekaCrystalBeads.com with another fun beading video for you. Before I get started, just a quick reminder to go check out the rest of our channel, and if you like what you see, hit that subscribe button and notification bell, and you'll always know when we're posting new content. Today's video is going to be a stitch tutorial. So it's not going to be a finished project, but it is a technique that you could use to make a finished project, and that is Pondo Stitch. And I have to tell you, this is my new favorite. I'm in love with it. Now, I will warn you, if you are one who tends to struggle with right angle weave, I would say familiarize yourself a bit with right angle weave first, because this one is kind of like the next step up. It's going to be a lot of the same thread paths, but there's just a little bit extra that we're doing here. So I would say uh, go watch some of our right angle weave tutorials if you're a bit uncomfortable with right angle weave. We've gotten some good feedback and we think they're pretty good. So that will definitely set you up for Pondo Stitch a little bit better. So to learn Pondo Stitch, we're going to be using a few really easy to use products. To start, you want to have two different colors of a size 8 seed bead. Now, you can use any other size seed bead you'd like. You can do Pondo Stitch with size 11s, even with size 15 if you want to torture yourself. But to learn it on size eights works really, really well. It's a lot easier on the eyes and it still sits together nicely. I'm going to be using some six pound fire line. And unlike my norm, I'm using a size 10 needle here, which again should be great news for anyone who struggles with those size 12s and threading them. If you're gonna be doing it with size eight seed beads, you are good to go with a size 10 needle. Okay, let's get started. Okay, to get started, you're going to have your color A and your color B. And one more thing I forgot to mention is we are going to use one additional bead as a stop bead. This is a size 11 stop bead. I just think they tend to stay on your thread just a little bit easier. So we're gonna pick up our stop bead. I'm gonna bring it to the end of some fire line. And again, this is just a stitch tutorial, so I'm not really giving out exact uh, amounts of beads or exact lengths of fire line because it's to make sort of a swatch of a stitch. We're going to go back through our stop bead there. It's going to create some tension just so that way the beads that we pick on, uh, we pick up next aren't going to come off. And now I'm going to pick up four of my color A. Bring it to the end, bring it to my stop bead. You're going to travel through all four beads all over again. Ignore your stop bead. Remember, we want to pretend like it's not there. It's serving a function, and that's it. So you're going to travel through all four. And when you pull, you're going to notice that it doesn't turn into a nice little loop. Well, the trick to get that to happen is to loop back around and go through the first one all over again. And then you will get your nice little bit of right angle weave to start because that's what this sort of starts to look like at first is right angle weave but don't worry in just a moment it's going to become pondo stitch now what we're going to do is nest a, a color b in between each of our color a beads so i'm going to pick one up i'm going to go through the next bead you're just kind of comes out to a point. So we had sort of a square, and now we're gonna have kind of a bigger square, but with points going in slightly different directions. We're gonna turn our beadwork, go through the next one. We're gonna turn our beadwork, and go through the next one. And again, ignore that little stop bead. Pretend like it's not even there. I like to sometimes hold my tail of thread kind of underneath it so it pulls it under so I don't even see it as much. We're going to pick up our fourth color B and we're going to go through at the beginning again one of our color A beads. And this is what you end up with. Again, just kind of ignore that little guy right there. This is what you end up with. Now, with the way Pondo Stitch works, is that our little links are gonna be connected by our color B beads. Those are our, our connectors. And what we're gonna be doing is, 
if this is the one that, well, actually I should probably say this one right here because that's the one that has our little stop bead. Let me just turn that around. If this was the very first one we made, you can see the little stop bead. We're gonna be creating a few little links. This is gonna be the width. Say for example, if this was gonna be a bracelet, the number of links we have across would be the width of the band. And then we're gonna come down here and we're gonna to start to do another row. But just to give you an idea of what we're making, where we are now, that's about where we are now. Okay, so we wanna go through one more bead and that's gonna be the next bead, which is a B color bead. And that's because those, like I said, are the connector beads. Okay, so this completes that first little unit. So now I'm gonna show you how we start the next unit, which will be connected as we go. All right, to start our next unit, we're going to pick up four of our color A. Now here's where you might start to get a little bit confused if you struggle with right angle weave or you have a hard time turning your brain off of right angle weave just a little bit uh, with DePondo stitches because normally when we're doing right angle weave, the bead that we're coming out of, we'd say do three more beads added because this would be the fourth bead, but it's throw, it can throw people off because we're picking up four, but remember this is four of the other color. So that's just something to keep in mind and that's definitely something that threw me off when I first started learning Pondo Stitch. Pull this down. And I like to turn my work just to make it a little easier. Now before we pick up any other beads, we're gonna go through the very next bead. So we picked up four, we circled back through, and then we're going through one, which was the first bead that we picked up. If it gets a little bit loose like this, just kind of give it a nice good tug, and then pinch it between your fingertips to keep it nice and tight. We're going to pick up a color B, go through the next color A. We're going to pick up another color B, go through the next color A. One more color B, and go through one more color A. So where you are right now is your thread is coming out, the bead before the color B that we started coming out of and the color B that's joining these two units together. Now here's the neat thing about Pondo Stitch. We wanna get all the way to here because that way we're at that same sort of corresponding area to do the next little unit. And what's nice though about Pondo Stitch is there are some little shortcuts you can take. We could go through every single one of these little beads here, or we can just go through the color A's and we can skip the color B's and it's not gonna make a difference. And I'm gonna show you what I mean when I do that. Get this little tail out of the way. So you might think, okay, well now I have to go through this bead. Well, actually, I can skip right over it and go right through the next one. And I'm gonna show you exactly how the thread is gonna pull right down. You pull it in and see how it cinched it in? It's a really nice way to save yourself some time because you're only having to go through like half the beads, which is great. So again, I can I can go through here. Nothing is going to be nothing is going to be um uh destroyed, uh no mistakes made if I if I go through here. But again, I can just choose to skip over it and go through that bead. Now in this case, I am gonna go through this one here because that's the one I want to end up coming out of. So if I'm able to just angle my needle, I can just do that. So here we go. We now have our second link. So we're gonna do that one more time. I'm gonna go just a little bit faster. We pick up four of our color A. Remember, we're coming out of a color B. Circle back around. At this point, I do like to turn my bead work just because I always tend to like to work counterclockwise if I can. Now, before we pick up another new bead, we're gonna go through one more in that circle, the first one of the four that we picked up. Give it a nice, nice good tug to keep some good tension on that. Now we can pick up a color B and go through a color A. Pick up a color B, go through a color A. Pick up a color B, go through a color A. Now, we're back to where we started. 
where I showed you how we can skip right over this bead if you want. And if it's too tricky to kind of get your needle in there, again, you can just go through this bead. It's not that big of a deal, but you will save yourself some little bits of time if you can go over it. So in this case, my needle happened to go through both beads. So I'm just going to go with it. That's no big deal. It's not going to change anything, but if you can skip them, it's just going to make your life a little bit easier. As long as you're going around that circle, really, you know, don't overthink it. So that's what we got. Now I'm going to do one more of those units and I'm going to come back in just a second to show you how we start the next row. Okay, so I've done one more of our little units here and I'm coming out of the very end. Now normally we could add on another and another and another and we could have a nice long lovely chain that you, you could use for any number of beading projects. But in this particular case, for this particular swatch, I want you to imagine what a final project could be which is that this could be the width of a really lovely bracelet. So if this is the width, now we need to start making some length. So because we're facing this direction, I'm gonna keep going around two more beads. So that way I'm coming out of the color B that's next in this little circle. Just like this. And again, had I skipped over the color A, that's fine too, and I could just come out the color B. Now, again, the tricky part here and why people who are very familiar with right angle weave might have a hard time turning this part off their brain or where people who struggle with right angle weave may simply struggle with this part of the stitch because of uh, it being the similar sort of loop-de-loops. Um, what we're normally going to be doing is we would be picking up beads that would be, you know, attaching to these rows. We're going to be doing it a little bit differently. I'm going to start with the same four, same four color A beads. I'm going to go through the bead that I'm coming out of, which is a color B, just like this, this is what you get. And just like before, we're gonna go through one more before we do anything else. So that first of the four I picked up, we're gonna go right through it. And again, I'm gonna turn my beadwork a little bit just cause I find it easier to work counterclockwise. That's just me. Make sure our circle is nice and tight. We're going to pick up a color B. We're going to go through. We're going to pick up another color B and we're going to go through. And another color B and we're going to go through. Now again, that technically completed the first of the new row and all of the units after that are going to be connected. Again, sort of like right angle weave, but only sort of. Okay, so now I have to get to the little side BB here because that's where we're gonna be having a connection. I'm gonna go through a couple more beads, or like I said, you could skip over that bead as long as you're coming out of the side, the, the color B right there on the side. And you can see, if I can get that tail out of the way, you can see that we have a unit that's going to be here. But remember how I said that our units are all connected by those color B beads. This is gonna be a connection point, and this is gonna be a connection point. So to start off, we're gonna pick up four of our color A's, and this is where those red and weave people are gonna get a little bit thrown off, because typically this is the part where you would start to connect it, but we're not connecting it yet until we complete this circle and go around and we're adding in our color B's. So we're starting off the same way that we have been by picking up four sort of standalone color A beads. And if you remember what we do next, it's to go through the first of those four before we do any other adding of beads. Now we're gonna pick up a B. We're gonna go through the next A. We're gonna pick up a B. We're gonna go through the next A. Now, here's where we don't have to pick up a B, not a new B anyway, because we have a B bead right here. So this is the one we're gonna go through. And look where it does, look where it goes. Okay, so we're gonna go through the next bead A, just like we would have which is gonna lock it all into place. And you can see how this is all going to tighten up beautifully. 
Isn't that great? So now we have to go around a little bit more till we're coming out over here. So again, I can go through this one or I can skip over it. So let's show you guys skipping over it. Save yourself just a little bit of time. But again, if you go through it too, it's no big deal either. You can see it just cinches it right in. So it's no big deal. So if you think to do it, cool, you'll save yourself a little bit of time. And if you don't do it, totally fine too. See, in this case, I'm not gonna skip over. I'm just gonna go straight through, no big deal. Now again, we're gonna start off by picking up four standalone beads. Cause remember, they're not, they're not connected by these four, by these color A beads, they're connected by the B beads. So we're going to circle back through the B bead that we're coming out of. Before we do anything else, we're gonna go through the first of those beads. Now we can pick up, oh no, now we don't have to pick up that one, that's right, because here it is, right here for us. Head right on through. And it's gonna sit right where we need it to and you're gonna see it a lot more clearly once I just go through this next bead. You can see that's where it's gonna sit, right in between those two here, so now, we just have to straighten this all out a little bit and we will do that by getting the rest of our beads in there. You can see we need our little bee right in there. And just to get us through there and tighten it up, I'm gonna get, get us through that bead too. There we go. How cool is that stitch? I absolutely love it. It ends up taking on um, a very chenille stitch look um, with those that all of that cinching that's happening but uh, the construction is just a little bit different. So let's see, we're gonna go through here because we have to make it to that little outer area. I'm gonna show you one more time just to finish off our little swatch. There we go, go through here. Okay, and our last one, let me get this tail out of the way. Our last one, four more, four more size A's, or color A's, I should say. Circle back through, go through one more, pick up a B, go through a B. And it's okay, again, if it doesn't look super tight, that's okay. It will tighten up once you sort of get around that little circle area. Pick up a B. Go through an A, and now pick up the B that's already right here waiting for you. And then go through the A that you would have. And then if you can angle your needle, you can get right through that last one. And once you pull it tight, there you go. So now, if we were gonna be starting another row, all I'd have to do is just travel through these other two beads, and then I'm set up to start the very next row using the same exact method. And that's what we have. And so actually you can, if you wanna visualize, you can see how this would all start to come together. A really beautiful, beautiful lacy stitch. Now again, let's just talk some design stuff here. So even with a size eight, which a lot of beaters might consider to be a sort of a clunkier size when you're used to using size 11s or 15s, this still looks light and airy and really quite beautiful and lovely and, and, and lacy. Uh, and, it's, and it's a size eight seed bead, so it's easy to work with. It's easy on your eyes. You get to use a size 10 needle, which hallelujah, that's great. Um, and you really get something that looks very delicate and not at all clunky. And it also is gonna work up incredibly, incredibly fast. So this is a really great evening project if you want something that becomes a bit mindless and you just want to bead, 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 and not as much think, 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 think among five different million steps. This one is going to be nice and repetitive, and you're going to work it up nice and fast. And one last thing I want to remind you of is you can do it in smaller stitches, in smaller size beads rather, and you're going to get a whole different look. It's going to be tighter, tinier, daintier, lacier, but just as gorgeous. You can do one long strip and have it be for a neck piece if you had done a lovely big beaded pendant. Or you can do what I'm doing here, which is to go start with your width and then you'd 
speed out and create length. So you have options here. And of course, speaking of options, head on over to EurekaCrystalBeads.com. We have a gazillion colors of size 8 seed beads, so you can bead these up to your heart's content. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching. Have fun with Pondo Stitch, and we'll see you next time. Bye.